Hello everyone and welcome to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today is DIY Wednesday and we are actually going to make custom party invitations. This party in particular happens to be for my husband's 50th birthday. We are planning a group cruise and I thought we should make invitations. So this is what I came up with wrapped in this cute little twine and it is a custom folder. That includes all of the cruise details, as well as the calendar on when the deposit's due for the cruise, when the final balance is due for the cruise, and then it also has an RSVP card so that I'll know who's planning on coming. That's what we're gonna work on today. You know, the reason why I wanted to do a video on DIY invitations is because what happened? What happened to invitations? Why now is it so acceptable to just like put an invitation out on Facebook? Who decided that was okay? Call me old school, but there is nothing like receiving an invitation in the mail to make you go, oh, this, first of all, looks amazing. I wanna go and how thoughtful the host of this party was to include me in this important event. Hell yeah, I'm gonna RSVP, I'm gonna RSVP right now. On Facebook, it's like, mm, all right, how many thousands of people did they decide that they're gonna send this invitation to group on uh, Facebook and maybe I see it, maybe I don't, maybe I'm not even on Facebook that much and here was this party that I really wanted to go to and I missed the invitation because it was on goddamn Facebook. Who decided that that was okay? Because whoever it was, they should be shot. An invitation not only shows the person that you're inviting that you really took the time and you really want them to be a part of this celebration, but it also sets the tone for the celebration. For example, this is a cruise, so I decided that the papers I were gonna use were gonna kind of be like travel-y, map-y, and then because it's a cruise, I wanted to do kind of like, um, maybe you put your plane tickets, kind of a situation look in here. So that's what I came up with. So let me tell you how I got started. First of all, you know, this is real life. When I do any sort of craft project indoors, I usually do it on the floor of my family room. I have my TV on to a movie that I've seen 52 times just so I can hear noise in the background and maybe look up at the funny parts every so often. It's I Feel Pretty with Amy Schumer, which is funny and I've already seen about five or six times. So this is, this is, man. Yeah. And I need to get these invitations out. So, I'm gonna sit down and do them. What I did is I did some prep. I went to my Joann's, I went to actually the Dollar Tree, and then I ended up going to Michael's. I grabbed this because this is a pro tip. If you are doing custom invitations, we all wanna do like these big and amazing invitations, but really, if you can fit your invitation into a regular size number 10 um, envelope, you'll be better off. It doesn't take any extra postage to send this sort of an invitation out. It's just your regular old, you know, forever stamp that's whatever it is, 43 cents or whatever. When you get into like square invitations or custom size invitations, those actually cost more in postage. Depending on the number of people you're inviting, postage could get pretty expensive. So my design usually revolves around the size of a number 10 envelope. Unfortunately, though Joann's didn't have any like matte papers or even like Mexican themed papers. That was a bust. I didn't even get one thing from the Joann's. So then I went to the dollar store and I actually found this, which you're like, why would you make an invitation out of poster board? That sounds stupid. Well, I'll tell you why. White cardstock for like a 12 by 12 piece. Maybe it's not 99 cents, but maybe it's 69 cents or 59 cents, I don't know. Wherever you get it, I just know that it's not five for a dollar. That's for damn sure. I thought, okay, poster board's good. It makes a nice, durable invitation. So, five for a dollar. What is that, like 20 cents? Basically, the substance of my invitation cost me 20 cents a piece, which is amazing. Then I went to the Michaels, and I found some really cute 12 by 12 little travel paper. 
And so I cut that down to the size I need, which will go over what I did here. But of course, you're doing your own custom invitation. You can do whatever size you want. You're only limited by your imagination. Doing an assembly line sort of process makes it go a lot faster. I did get on the computer and came up with you know, all the verbiage that needed to go here. I printed these out. I cut them down so that it would fit in my invitation nicely. Um, I actually printed my own RSVP cards, cut those out. And these little inserts here, I printed on kind of a lightweight cardstock. It's 65 pound cardstock. I got it at Michael's. So those are my supplies. And I've pre-cut everything, pre-printed out everything, just so that I can assembly line this whole process. I have my bin of supplies sitting right here because it pretty much has everything I need. And then once I'm sitting on the floor, I don't have to get back up again. Pretty much everything is just spread out around me. So we are ready to go. Let's start with how in the world did I come up with this from this cardstock? I knew that my finished size needed to fit inside a number 10 envelope. I got this poster board and it measures 11 here by 13 here. So I definitely needed to trim it down. I trimmed it down to 12 because I like to use this little paper trimmer when I'm trimming cardstock. It just trims really smooth. And what's cool with this is, it has this little ruler out here so when you need to trim something down you just pop it in here line it up to what you want to trim it to and then you trim it the reason why i wanted to cut this down to 12 is because the paper trimmer only fits 12 this way just stack your sheets over to the side and then know that you need to trim it down to 12. so i'm lining it up here at the 12 mark then voila, put my scrap over to the side, put this one over here, grab this next one, shove it in, and boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna do four right now, and then you'll see like, yeah, she's not lying, this shit is fast. Now the next step is I wanna score it so that I can have a cleaner fold. When you're working with like a thicker poster board or a card stock, it is nice to be able to score it because when you're trying to fold something and you want it perfect, like there's like, it's like wrinkly and not professional looking. I wanna do stuff DIY, but I don't want it to look like a third grader did it. If I can use a tool that will make me have a more professional outcome, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna bring my scorer back over. This is your little scoring tool right here is your scoring tool. Because I know that my envelope is a little over four, I'm gonna make my score line at four because that's where I want this to fold in half at four so it fits inside of there nicely. I'm gonna put it on the 11 side and I'm going to score with this little tool, just stick it in the four divot and score down. And then I'm gonna quarter turn it for my pocket. Now, because I know my number 10 envelope is nine and a half long, I'm gonna score my pocket at nine and a quarter. And if you do it exactly the length or width of the envelope, it won't fit inside. It doesn't seem like that would be the case, but it doesn't fit inside. So you gotta make it a little tiny bit shorter. So I'm gonna go nine and a quarter, score here. So now I have my two score marks. So let me do a couple more here. Basically these score lines now, well this long one, becomes my cut line because I only want a pocket on one side of my folder. I'm going to use this long or the shorter score line as my cutting guide. I'm gonna line up that score line with where the blade is. But now I'm not gonna cut all the way down because I need to leave a little pocket. So I'm only gonna cut to where my long four inch score line is. So I'm gonna cut and I can see pretty easily where the score line is so I know where to stop. Boom, move that aside, go to my next one. So you can see I've cut only to where I'm gonna fold this invitation to fit inside the flap. I'm gonna turn it now this way 
and I'm gonna line up my long score line in the cutting area and now only cut to where I just cut that way. So line it up, stop at that cut, boom. This is my pocket, this is my fold. If I were to fold this on my long score line, you can see here what, what, what's happening. What's happening here? Clearly, that's not good. Why I didn't trim this side off initially is because sometimes when you fold it, stuff gets jacked up, nothing's lining up. So I like to fold it and then trim this off. This little score thing that we use to score actually creases the paper pretty nice as well. So I'm gonna use the back of this little chingadera and I'm gonna do that. And then I am also going to fold up my pocket and do that. Now I've got nice sharp line. Do you see how this little pocket, when I fold it, it kind of gets a little stuck in there? You actually have to cut out a tiny little bit of that pocket at an angle so that when you fold it up, it folds flat and everything lays beautifully. That one you just eyeball. So I've got these big scissors that used to be my sewing scissors until someone in my family decided that they were gonna cut other things other than fabric with them and now they've turned into my paper crafting scissors. Whatever my eyeball feels and I don't go super wide because I don't wanna take off that much of the pocket but basically I just eyeball it, boom, chop that little piece off. Go along with my next ones. So now we're actually ready to fold this dude. We're gonna fold that up. Now we are ready to trim everything, make everything even so that it fits into our number 10 envelope. I'm gonna line up the nice clean folded edge with the blade, get that all even, boom, done. Now look at that, everything's nice and even and smooth. You've got yourself your little pocket, so that one's good. Now we have all of our folders, which is nice. We're, we're good to go. We're good to put in the important meat of everything. You could use glue stick, but I find that glue stick doesn't really hold um, all that well, no matter what they say. I don't care who makes the, the glue stick. I use this Easy Tear Double-Sided Tape. I happen to get this one at the Michaels, but they have it at Joann's as well. I got it in two widths. So I have this little wider width, and then I have this little tiny baby skinny width. This little tiny baby skinny width is what I use to glue the one side of my pocket to this. It's super easy to use and it's exactly what they say. It is easy tear. Oh, I just looked over Bob who, which let's just have a conversation about Bob the crazy cat, which he's not crazy. He's sleeping in his bed, which he never does. I came home today and I had everything like laid out because I prepped everything last night and everything was a mess. Everything was all over the floor. My twine was out. It was a shit show. So I had to clean all of that up, reorganize everything and start again. And I thought for sure while I was doing this, he was gonna be all up in here and you were gonna see his butt. But he's actually now tuckered out and now he's laying in his bed. So, thanks. Anyways, moving on. So because I don't want the invitation to just be fucking white and boring, I got that cute printed paper. I'm going to do one on the front and then cause I'm extra like that, I'm actually gonna do one on the back. I also want to lay one on the inside underneath the invitation wording. And you're probably looking at this going like, Sherry, that's so lame. Why would you waste your time and your paper and your glue when you barely see any little border of this background paper? And I say, 
because I want to, because I think it looks way cuter with even the tiniest bit of border than with no border at all. Boring. And because I'm making these myself, I can do whatever I want. You don't have to do this part. You could just do this part if you want to. Um, you don't have to do it on the front and the back, but look, I think it looks super cute when you open it on the front and the back. You gotta admit, it takes what, one extra minute to put it on the front and the back and the inside, so whatever, I had the paper. It was a 12 by 12 sheet. It's not like I'm wasting any paper. If anything, I'm using more paper and not wasting anything except my time. <laughs> this is my front. And I take this tape, and I'll show you how easy and wonderful this tape is. I swear it's the greatest. I don't even need scissors for it. So I'm just going to line it up with the edge here and roll it to this edge over here. And then I'm just gonna rip it. That's it. And I do all edges as close to the edge as I can possibly get. I don't put anything down the middle. I don't feel that's necessary. And this holds very nicely, this tape, so I don't worry about it coming up or anything like that. Do my last little side and rip that. What I do find with this is this backing is a little bit hard to get off. But what makes it easier is if you take this tool they call this move burnishing. So if you kind of rub the tape down into the paper, it makes the tape really, really stick so it takes out all the air bubbles. If you burnish it really, really well, then because the sticky part of this tape is down on the paper so well, it actually makes um, taking off the backing that much easier. I kind of like find the best corner and then boom. Take it off. Boom, so I've got all my sticky stuff off. This is the front of my folder here because I want my pocket to be on the left side when people open it. So this is the front. I eyeball this. With this sticky tape, once you lay it down, shit's down, there's no moving it. So you kinda just gotta like look around, make sure your edges are even, make sure you kind of have the same amount of distance um, top to bottom, laying that down. And then again, I burnish it because I'm like a professional stationer. I'm not really. Do all of that, all my sides are good. Put that over, grab my back side. This is this paper I want for my back side. Do the same thing and run it along each edge. So here's my back side. I'm gonna line that up with that. Lay it on down, perfect. Front and back, donezo. Now, I want my inside piece. I'm gonna do the same thing I just did two times already. I send invitations out for everything. The DIY crafter girl in me likes to make invitations, but then again, I'm also like I said, old school, and I think a formal invitation is important. I could be the only one. Let me know in the comments, am I the only person out there that thinks a custom invitation is important? Not even custom, just a fucking invitation that you send in the mail to someone. I think it's important. And I'm not saying that people, I mean, believe me, I've gone to many events from a text message or a Facebook invite. It's not like I protest them and don't go at all. I know that everybody's not down to send out an invitation or sit here, you know, for a couple hours and make an invitation. I get it. I'm not saying that people who don't make custom invitations are horrible people and should never throw a party again. Make an invitation. And you're smart. You could figure out a different layout or something that might not take as long. They have all the supplies at the Michaels and the Joann's. It's not rocket science that we're doing here. We're just gluing paper on top of paper. And then my next one is my actual wording, which is gonna lay right on top here. So again, getting out my glue roll. And these glue rolls, I always like go, God dang, I feel like they're kind of expensive, but I would say all in all, I'm gonna say $3 an invitation, probably less. If you count postage, let's say $3.50. For a completely customized invitation, 
that is going to totally set the tone for the party that you are inviting these people to. It's going to get them excited. It's going to make them, you know, want to come. I, mean, I think that's a small price to pay to just show somebody that you really want them at your event. 350. Anyways, I've got that glued in. Now I want to glue my pocket down. So I'm going to take the super duper 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 skinny sticky tape. I'm going to line it up as close to the edge as possible. Not going over that score line. Peel that off. Fold it and burnish that really good because we don't want that pocket popping up on us. Now on the front, I could have left it just like this, but boring. Hi Bob. Hi Bob. Welcome. I just printed this out on normal coffee paper and I'm just going to glue it to the top there. And then again, I eyeball a lot of stuff. So I kind of know that I just want it like up here. I think that looks good. So I'm going to put it right there. Glue that down. Voila. And then all we have left to do is fill the pocket. Another pro tip. I use this paper trimmer for like the cardstock and like um, when I don't have a super lot to trim, I bring out this. I literally like stack up my sheets. Here, I'll just, I'll stack them up and then I'll just measure it out. Fa boom, turn it, fa boom. And so I can knock out like three to five sheets in one shot rather than individual sheets on the slicer one. So that is what I used to cut all of this here. And it worked out perfect. I made this cute little card and I included Spanish because it's a Mexican cruise. I don't know Spanish at all. I literally typed in important dates to remember and this is what Google told me it was in Spanish. And then I just made a March calendar, an April calendar, and a June calendar so that they can literally take this out of this pocket and pin it on their refrigerator so that they know when deposits due, when another portion is due, and when the final payment is due. So I'm gonna shove this in the pocket here. I'm gonna shove this in here as well. And voila, we have everything ready to go in our nice little invitation. The last thing I wanna do is, cause I just think it looks cute, is I am going to put some twine around it before I shove it in my number 10 envelope. There you go. Your completely custom invitation. You can make it however you want. All I'm saying is I'm hoping this video inspired you to actually make an invitation for your next party. It's nice. I like it. I'd like to get an invitation like this. I'm just saying. That is it. Hopefully this video has inspired you to get some brain juices flowing for an invitation for a party that you might be throwing soon. If you do or you've made some invitations, I'd love to hear how it went. Please leave me a comment. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also subscribe and don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, thanks for hanging out.